I purchased a small set from Schminky after trying their Tundra set in another video, and before even starting to paint this very large version of the Hogwarts castle, I knew the painting would turn out to be gorgeous. That's due to the nature of the paints, and in this video, I'll show exactly why that is and how I'm using these wonderful watercolors for landscape painting in case you want to try them out. This is a sample of the Volcano set because I think they are normally five colors in the original set. However, you will find a smaller version as well, and it's only three colors. I love red, violet, and brown, my three favorite colors, so when I saw it, I knew I had to buy it. Aside from the gorgeous colors, these paints are special because they are super granulating watercolors, and according to Schminky, each color is made of at least two granulating pigments for additional color changes. Essentially, super granulating watercolors have those larger and thus heavier granulating pigments in them, and when you add water, those tend to clump together in places, usually inside the crevices in the paper. That's also why Schminky says that the rougher the texture of the paper is, the stronger the granulating effect. You'll be able to get a textured effect and different colors might emerge and separate, depending on what pigments each color is made of. In my volcano set colors, you can see hints of a blue color, for instance. So now let's see how these look in a very large painting of the Hogwarts Castle, which by the way is a real one located in Northern England. And I'll tell you why I love these watercolors so much. I very rarely paint such large pieces, let alone with super granulating watercolors. That was a first and I was excited for the final outcome because I want to have this framed and on my walls to go with our new couch. I never paint directly on a block, just once or twice before. I usually detach the sheets and I use masking tape, but these blocks are designed to be painted on, so I decided to use that option. Out of experience, I made sure to outline my sketch clearly enough to avoid losing my lines too easily after the first layer. With only three colors that look so similar, it could be tricky to decide where to add what. So from the beginning, my plan was to treat this as monochrome painting, volcano red being the light tone, Volcano Purple, the mid-tone, and Volcano Brown, the dark tone. I always allow myself to use black and white if I need to, so highlights and shadows never become an issue. You can see I started very light, plus it's a very different job to paint on the large sheets, so no stress with that strategy. I just blocked in everything, minus the very bright parts on the reference that I left untouched, and that's mainly in the sky and part of the lake. I knew I'd have time to work on the castle a lot more later, so a light coat was enough. However, for the sky, the mountains, the ground below, the lake, it's a good idea to shape everything on wet. It's a bit faster, and I didn't need them to be hyper detailed either. It also helps with getting a sense of unity between all parts without harsh lines to separate them, and you can see where the painting is going. At this point already, we can distinguish the rocks, how they're shaped, how the slope is on the hill, and we're already getting a little bit of that rustic look that I love from super granulating watercolors. They feel a look very organic. And before, I even wondered if I might not just paint with these, but it's hard to pass on all the other beautiful paints out there. I was surprised the hints of blue didn't show. I remember on the Chundra set, colors started separating right on paper, and I'm pretty sure I was using the same Ash 100% cotton cold press paper. With a good foundation, I felt ready to go darker, and that's where the volcano brown color started to be helpful because with violet and red alone, I wouldn't have been able to do much. I added a bit in the sky, just barely, to tie this upper and very light part to the bottom part of the painting. At this point, I had something solid to keep going, and I safely started on the castle from there. It's funny because so far, this looked like my couch color a lot, and I wasn't expecting this much of a resemblance. After that, I needed to get a feel for how to paint the castle, and what I do in this case is paint a section of the art almost entirely, and when I feel I know what I'm doing, I go finish the rest because normally in watercolor painting, it's common to work on the whole painting towards refining it later, 
rather than painting sections, but I've seen realism artists do it that way too. I went with all three colors in a random way, just experimenting, and after that I started painting the rocks to have a sense of how much contrast to add to the whole castle in relation to the land. I used simple strokes to create texture on those rocks, and I did that too for the water. And I find that we think water is very hard to paint sometimes, but as you can see here, just some color and a few gentle strokes can be enough to suggest it. You just have to try it once or twice to get started with painting water. At this point, I don't know if you can clearly see it from a video, but I could tell the colors are super granulating. They looked rustic. And another thing I love about these types of paints is that they look muted. It would be very hard to make a painting look flashy, even with this volcano red. And that's something I personally appreciate very much. I noticed a new schminky set came out recently for Cityscapes and I'm considering trying it. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Now I knew where I was going with the castle. I batched the steps a bit more and simplified the process. It's one of the perks of experimenting on one section first. So I simply painted the whole castle with my lighter color, red. I took advantage to add some to the land to make it less boring and tie it to the castle itself. And then I went over the parts that needed more contrast with Volcano Violet. I created some texture with the dry brush technique in places. And then I added the windows and shadows with Volcano Brown. I got the idea to lift color with a wet paper towel to render the impression of mist I was seeing in my reference photo. And on this ash cotton paper, these watercolors lift really well. And when that happens, I love to use it to serve the painting and you'll see I use it even more later. I kept going, this was my third filming session, one in one afternoon, one in the same evening, and this one the day after. And I kept refining shadows while progressing with a mix of volcano brown and black. And I prefer to do this on very large paintings to make sure I keep the contrast accurate and under control, and it's easier when the whole painting moves at the same time in a way. So there was a lot of back and forth. Normally, in a small piece, I will proceed in steps more and not necessarily backtrack to a certain step. But for large pieces, I feel it's streakier to do it that way. There's always more to improve on also. And to be honest, I could have kept on working on this for at least one hour after finishing. But I'm trying to avoid being tighter in my style than I already am. So I try not to overdo it. I used the fact it's easy to lift paints with a combo Ash Cold Press and Schminky Volcano to make the front buildings pop more against the back buildings. I'm a fan of adding artificial highlights because they look more crisp, but I've found with practice that it will be more elegant if I can leverage the subtle highlights that come from the paper primarily, then maybe add a few crisp highlights of my own. The color Volcano Red is beautiful, and like I said, it's one of my favorite colors. So I went it directly with the tube and my finger to add strong touches of red. It makes it more dramatic and it adds to the rustic effect I find. With my Daniel Smith White Watercolor Stick, I highlighted a few things. It's what I called earlier the artificial highlights. And the trick is always not to add too many of these. I've done that in the past for sure, so it's something I consciously work on now. I had to sign it because it's so rare for me to paint large, let alone for my house. And this might also be exhibited at a festival next May, so the signature is a must. If you enjoyed this, I suggest this video about the beautiful Tundra sets. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.